defending the indefensible. That is the unenviable task of every single Premier League manager who comes up against Manchester City and more importantly, their goal machine, Erling Haaland. I'm Will Pugh, this is Dean Scoggins. Dino, if Mikel Arteta, Arnie Slot, Ange Postacoglu are watching this video right now, how do you stop Erling Haaland? First of all, it's not impossible. Give him distance, defend the box as a unit, engage him on crosses. Defend in a U shape outside the area and starve him of the ball. And then, as strange as it sounds, attack. First of all, what do you mean give him distance? Why are you telling people to stay away from him? He loves defenders to engage. Normal, big centre backs, they want to get in his face. They want to get on the back of him. They want to get, they want to hit strikers early. You'll have heard it. Go on, give him an early one. <laughs> and Proper Sunday league Absolutely. Stuff. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to do that against Erling Haaland. His history in handball, he played a lot of handball oh, as a sorry, kid. Hang on a minute. His history in handball. Absolutely. What does that even well, mean? He wanted to, they wanted him to play for the national team at handball. Handball being a very physical, fast game. He wants to grapple. He wants a bit of shirt. He wants to be able to drag a defender in and then receive the ball, spin, and dispose of that defender as he goes past. Then all of a sudden you're down to a back three after he's brushed somebody aside. Van Dijk did it against him in an in a international game, broke his finger. Kimmich did it against him in a Champions League game, ended up in surgery. And uh, we've seen Premier League defenders try and try. Romero couldn't do it, as physical as Romero is. So don't get too close to him. He's not a danger to you when he's two yards in front of you with his back to goal and he's not got hold of you. Second one, defend the box. That appears to be quite an obvious shout. He scored so many goals, 90 in his two seasons in the Premier League. 86 of those have been inside the penalty area. So defending the box, it seems quite obvious. I'm assuming there's a little bit more science behind him. There, there is, but it is essentially that. He is the most complete striker inside the penalty area. But basically, it's discipline. And you're going to come with a back four, a back five, maybe even a back six, a lot of teams will do, where the full backs become so narrow inside the edge of the box that the wingers have to come back and defend as well. And then, obviously, you're playing Foden, you're playing De Bruyne, so your midfield players end up coming in and making yeah. it almost a back eight. Yeah. And, and that is fine. That is what they'll drill on the training ground. Let's keep them outside of the area. The difficulty against Man City comes actually not necessarily from Haaland. It comes from the full-backs and their wingers who stretch the game out wide, and they actually run beyond the yeah. edge of the area closer. So obviously the centre backs, to not have Haaland played on side, have to drift in as well, have to mark him. Otherwise the full backs either side are going to play him on side. And then City recycle the ball. If it can't be crossed, they recycle it and they go backwards. So the discipline has to be this move up and down as a defence and keep him outside the area. What about when they do get the ball out wide and the cross is on? He's an absolute specimen. Erling Haaland, he's a, he's a total beast in the air. Not loads of goals from headers, but he does get a few assists as well. I think eight headed assists over his two seasons, plus just 12 goals, I think, from headers. When they do get the cross in, how do you combat him then? You have to get into your mindset that he is bigger and he is going to get up in the air and he's going to get up in the air very early. So defenders normally will talk about jumping with an attacker, yeah. jumping alongside them, I'm a big centre half, I'm going to beat them in the air. Against Haaland, that's not possible. <laughs> so what you have to do is actually just make sure you time your jump so you knock him off balance in the air and engage with him in the box. And what he does, absolutely unbelievably, to centre backs who don't time their jump well enough, he uses them to elevate himself. Right. So he bounces off the back of a defender and then stays in the air for longer. So that is a real big thing. So centre backs, what they have to do, and what Ben Mee did for Brentford, and he did it maybe a dozen times in that game where they kept a clean sheet against Man City, was as Haaland jumps, you jump into Haaland. Yeah. And so you knock him off balance. So you don't end up in this situation where he's effectively on your shoulders, using you as a table to stand on so he can head the ball in the back of the net. You've mentioned there already about when Man City force teams into pulling their two wingers back, so it turns into a back six. Sometimes then when the onslaught is so huge, it turns into a back eight 
as well, transitional play is where they're so, so good. What's the best way to defend against Haaland because he's such a massive tool for them in their transitions? It's, it's all to do with communication and we talked about the U-shaped defence. So the U-shaped defence basically means you've got a back four or back five and then in front of that you've got a U-shape of players. So that U-shape of players are trying to cut off the supply. And actually, if the ball goes into his feet in those areas, as long as, as we said at the beginning, nobody goes into a <laughs> grappling match with him, it's OK. He can have the ball there because he's got his back to goal. He's not a threat in the penalty area. He's facing backwards. Dare I say, his touch isn't actually that good. <laughs> you know, he's yeah, he's yeah. a top-class finisher, but he's not got the ball skill. <laughs> 900 grand a week, Bernardo can't Silva. control the ball. Yeah, 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 second yeah. touch of tackle and all yeah. that. But, but, he, but as long as you've got him going that way, but the U shape means, and Arsenal did this in the game at the Etihad where they got that amazing point, I actually think they should have gone on to win the game, but their setup was absolutely immaculate where they form this group around him and then when he does have the touch, if it's sideways, a defender comes in and engages, if it's back towards his own goal, the defender's got to be knowledgeable enough to know that's not my ball, I'm letting the midfielder have it and then you don't engage, as I said, and then he's in this little circle in the middle of the field mm. where he's not really doing you any yeah, damage. throwing his arms up Absolutely. in the air, going yeah. and sulking. So U-shape is, is really, really key to it. And it's often why some of the lesser teams do so well, the Brentfords, who have got somebody no like offense, Ben Brentford. Mee. Yeah, no offence, Brentford, sorry. <laughs> um, but Ben Mee did it superbly, where he was just drilling the midfielders in front of him to move one way or the so other. So it's the midfielders who are creating the U-shape. Absolutely, And, and then yeah. they're just, I assume shepherding whatever direction the ball is, wherever City win it back up the pitch, you're then making sure you're Absolutely. that side. If you imagine Harlan's the D on manager. the edge of the box, that space, wherever Haaland goes yeah, yeah, in yeah. that half. Yeah. So it keeps that little sort of ring of steel around him. Your final one, and, and this seems like odd advice against Manchester City, was attack, attack, attack and attack wide. But how does that relate particularly to Haaland here? But it relates to Haaland because if, you, if you've got to push the play up the field, he's obviously, as we've talked about, less successful when the ball's not in the area. Yeah. And also, what a defence must not do is push all the way up to the halfway line. We saw it against Wolves last year where Wolves suddenly had this idea that I know we'll push up to halfway and we'll starve him. And he just brings you in, spins you off, and they scored four in no time. <laughs> Man City of just playing around the corner. City do give you chances to mm. attack, but they give you those chances in wide areas. And if you attack in those areas, it means City's fullbacks are thinking, I can't go all the way. Yeah. If you've got Son on one side and Brennan Johnson the other, or you've got Saka one side and Martinelli the other with raw pace, those fullbacks that can't commit to go all the way. And that means where then the fullbacks can drag a defence out wide, yeah. which means then you allow Haaland that space in the channels to get in the box, they're starving that by attacking. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, is Man City haven't just got Erling Haaland. They've got yeah. seven or eight world-class attacking <laughs> players. They're the champions for a reason. <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and it's very easy to stand here and, and do something on paper. And Premier League managers, coaches, defensive coaches will be looking at all of these things to try and make life for Haaland more and more difficult. I mean, it was 26 Prem goals one year, 27 the, the other. You know, it's 90 in total, um, approaching 100 appearances. So it is very difficult to do, but it can be done.